Yeah. How was your COVID? Was it good? Mine was good. I spent some time with family, questioned everything. Um, I mean, I, I survived it so far. I, I kind of, I couldn't say it when COVID first came out, but like, I like knew I wasn't gonna die from it. Like I just, I know that's cocky and probably I, I, I'm wrong, but I feel the same way about like texting and driving. Like I'm good, like I got it. I, you shouldn't, but like, I'll be okay. I know that's crazy, but I'm just different, you know? I don't do it, but I could, but I don't. I really am good about it. Like, if you ever see me texting and driving, it's, it's always because I'm at an intersection, just plowing through it. But that's because it was important. No, I just like did not think I was gonna die, but I just, I just like don't get sick, ever like physically sick. I, it's not like a brag, mentally I'm fucked, but um, oh, that'll take me out soon. But um, and it's not because I'm like, it's not because I'm like genetically superior. I just was like, I'm just not gonna die of it. Like I just, I'm just like so gross that my immune system is, is pretty great. I just, I'm, I'm gross. Like I, like I eat at Subway, like <laughs> proudly, I love it. I'll eat something off the ground, five second rule, like five month rule, I don't care. Like sometimes I get jealous of my Roomba, to be honest with you. I was like, I was gonna get that. I was waiting for it to get like chewy. I seriously am gross. If you ever see me in a public restroom and I'm like waving my hand under the soap dispenser and it just doesn't come out, like it just is like, like it just like queefs nothing. Like, I don't go to another one. I just go, you know what, I tried, that was good enough. And I wash like there was something there. I'll mime like, ooh, suds, but there aren't any and you know that too. I just don't care about germs. So I don't know, it's, it was hard for me sometimes with the mask, like I would be like, I don't wanna wear it, I'm not scared, but it's like, it's not about you. Like it's about other people. I had to remember like, I created a mantra for myself to remind myself of that. Cause it was like, okay, you don't care if you get it, you just don't wanna give it. You're fine if you get it, you just don't wanna give it. It's like oral sex. Like you just don't wanna give it to the elderly, you know, or your, or your parents, it'd be awful. It's like, ugh, go down on your mom or dad like that. I just couldn't live with myself. I'm sorry for that imagery, but like, now that it's out there, like, if you had to go down on one of them, like, who would it be? Like, if you had, like, just, just, and I'm not saying that to be outrageous, I promise you. I'm not saying that just so you're like, she's shocking and gross. I'm only saying that because I thought it once and I don't want to be alone with that, okay? So that's, you have to have it too now. Okay, I'm gonna save you time. Like, don't even think about it, like, stop. I know it's gonna haunt you for, you know, a while, but it shouldn't. I figured it out. Gotta go with your mom. Go with your mom. It's, it's an easy one. First of all, your mom has had her pussy eaten way less than your dad has had his dick sucked in his life. That's just stats. It's, give her one more for the road. You know what I'm saying? Cause you will, she will kill herself after you go down on her. You'll take your own life too. So just, you can't keep living after you go down on your mom. So, yeah. Give her one more. And also, now this is just solid logic. You gotta go down on your mom because if you were a vaginal birth, you already touched it with your mouth. Like you already, you've been down there technically. You've, your mouth has hit it. It's just unavoidable. It's just true. I'm sorry. Dare I say it was the first thing you ever did um, on this planet. And it'll be the last. It's so gross. I like, I don't like that joke either. It's awful. I just have to do that joke sometimes because I just feel like it perfectly encapsulates like what comedians are supposed to do, which is present information that's true that you haven't thought of before. And that joke, the Venn diagram, I mean, for it's true and you've never thought of it before, that joke is a fucking, that really hits the baby's mouth on the mom's clit or whatever, the nail on the head, whatever, however you say it. But that's, it just is the most true thing. A guy asked me to call him daddy in bed recently. Um, and it was Father's Day, so I was like, okay, I'll give it to you. But I f didn't get him a gift last year. No, it's, I'm, I was weirded out by it and it grossed me out. And only because I kissed my dad on the lips till I was like 24. And 
it was just a thing we did in my family, you know, like deny alcoholism. Like we just <laughs> like, act like everything's fine. And um, I remember the day I put an end to it. I had just been like smooching all day long with my boyfriend, not to brag or whatever, but I was just like really going hard with a guy. And um, I went to go meet my parents for dinner and I, I greeted my dad and just like we went in and I kissed him on the lips and it's uh, the wires just got crossed. Like they just, I lingered a second too long and it was just, ugh, and I stopped immediately. Like I let go of his lip, I was biting it, but I was like, dad, I can't kiss you anymore. He was so sad too, my sweet dad. He was just like, don't be weird about this. We, we kiss on the lips in this family. That's what we do. And I'm like, then why don't you and mom ever do it? Why do <laughs> Lorne and I have to suffer? <laughs> my sister. But I, you know, I, I do it. I sometimes do it. Cause sometimes he's just like, Nikki, come on, I incest. And I was like, okay, that's a good dad. I'll, oh. Say it like that. I don't know, I just, I felt weird when the guy wanted me to call him daddy. I didn't want to kink shame though, I didn't want to be like, what the fuck, are you fucking, with? you know? Cause I, I, I just, you know, I don't want to yuck someone's yum. I found the best way to discourage something in bed that you're not into is to try to get them to not be into it on their own, you know? Try to ruin it for them. So I gave in at first, it was hard, but I was like, oh yeah, does daddy like that? What about this, does daddy like this? And by the end of it, I was just like, da, 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 da. He came right away. And that's when I, that's when I knew. That's when I knew I had to keep my niece and nephew away from him. I never want to make anyone feel bad about something I think they're doing that's gross. It's just, cause I know that I bring so many things to the bedroom that would gross a guy out. Like um, lots of little pieces of toilet paper in my vagina <laughs> lips that get stuck despite my best efforts. I don't know, I don't know why. I do know, I use one ply. I'm trying to save the goddamn planet. <laughs> I do. It's, oh God, just these, you know what I'm talking about. By your laughter, I know, thank God, I'm not alone on this one. <laughs> these little hamster joints, they're the tiniest little, they're finely rolled in such a way that I'm like, the meticulousness of this roll. My pussy in the Wu-Tang Clan, like this is impressive. So you know, you know what I'm talking about. And I, I look for them. I try to scour my vagina before I even, if I think a guy's gonna go down there, I definitely look for them. I try to get them all out. Cause it's happened to me so many times. I'll go, I'll go through it page by page. I will leave through. Sometimes I don't finish it all before he picks me up and I put a bookmark in it or I, you know, dog ear a lip and I get back to it. I always try to get them all. I try, despite my best efforts, I will still have a guy go down there and I'm very confident, like, got them all. And I'll just hear him go, <laughs> just like, like <laughs> God damn it. Like, I always used to think these little pieces of toilet paper were because I was like, there's something wrong with me. Why am I so gross? That's not why. I try to get him out. And I know that I'm not alone. I found out I'm not alone. I remember I was in high school. I just got glasses for the first time. So I could like clearly see the ground in front of me in a public restroom and all of a sudden this world of tiny little hamster doobies like lit up to me and they were everywhere there's like a cockroach smoking one of them in the corner i'm like oh my god this is a th this is a common problem it's not just me i feel connected to other women when i see them and i do believe it's probably how we'll communicate with each other when we lose all our rights inevitably you know when we're handmaids it's all we'll have we'll just be walking to market and just you'll just kind of release some, just kick them out. Like Andy Dufresne on the Shawshank prison yard, just, just leave a little pile. And you'll come across your friend's pile and be like, oh, of Caleb still alive. She's out there. She hasn't had the good fortune of hurling herself off a cliff. So we'll use them someday. And by someday, I mean like three years when he comes back. Um, that joke will get me beheaded. <laughs> the town square oh well I don't know I just I have felt so much shame about my vagina over the years I've worked a lot of my shame out on stage it's helped me I will shave my vagina thoroughly and I will go to itch it later on in the day and there will be a patch of hair that is so substantial it's almost like out of one of those children's books where it's like pet the bunny and it's just like a little round circle you're like you can feel it go on pet it like, I go 
<laughs> show Poppy this. That's my niece. But um, I don't know. I don't like love my vagina. I'm, I'm getting there. I feel like acceptance is the key. I don't need to love it. I don't need to do what these magazines tell me in like body positivity posts or like love your vagina. Like just look at it. Stand over a mirror and gaze at it. I've never wanted to do that. I've never done it. I don't want to be like, you know, Pocahontas over a creek, like speaking to my grandmother's reflection. What should I do? She's like, follow your dreams. I'm like, I will. It's just like, it's fine. It's just, I don't want to look at it that often. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm fine with it. I accept it. And it's like, I think the shame about our vaginas is probably why men don't go down on us as much as they should. You know, pussy eating and, and dick sucking is not, uh, is not equal. And I think some of it is because when men go, I'm not into it, we go, yeah, you're right. I wouldn't either, it's, it's fine. You're probably right. And it's, don't worry about it, it's not my birthday. And I mean, it is, but I'll have another one in four years. It's February 29th and it's every leap year, but it's, it's fine, you don't have to do it. It's just true, they don't go down on us as much. And you know, there are certain guys that are really like outspoken about it and we just let them be. DJ Khaled came out and was like, I don't eat pussy. I don't eat my wife's pussy. And I'm just like, I didn't know you could get any more worthless. Like what do you do if you don't eat pussy, truly? <laughs> he just shouts his name over his wife coming in the room by herself um, and claims it as his own. Is that what he does? Um, I don't mean, <laughs> I already didn't care for him that much. And when I heard that, I was like, fuck you. But th then I looked into it and I go, hold on, let me empathize with this guy. Maybe there's another story here. And there was. DJ Khaled, at the time he said that he was a spokesman for Weight Watchers and pussy's like eight points. So maybe he was just really trying to stick to his plan. That's a, that cuts into your day, you know? He had a goal. I can't understand when guys are just like, I'm just like not into it. Like I get not being into it, but do you think we suck dick just for the taste of it, Diet Coke? Like we don't. It's, I don't care if you don't like it. It's not like I don't like sucking dick. I do like it because, you know, it's something I've done. It gives pleasure to someone I care about. I'm getting kind of good at it. I, I can leave in my Invisalign because it like rounds out my teeth and I don't worry about biting too hard or scraping a dick. I can straighten as I blow, but I don't like inherently like it. I don't care if you don't like it. Like, I, I really don't need you to love it. I, that's not part of it for me. For every faction of guys that's like, I don't eat pussy, there's always another one that's like, I I'll do it, I'll eat it all day, I love pussy. Wait, I'll do it, I love pussy, I'll, I'll eat your pussy. And it's just like, not you. Like, you're not, you're, your mouth is wet. It looks like you already were. And I just, can I just have my pizza and you go, okay? I don't know why you told me that. Should have done DiGiorno. It's always just like, it's like, oh, I love eating pussy. They're just like, oh. and then they think we're gonna be like, you do? Will you marry me? Like, we don't want you, I don't want someone to want pussy in general. Just like, any, I just love pussy. I love eating pussy. I'm like, I think you have a vitamin deficiency of some sort because it should be something you crave. <laughs> Take a fish oil supplement, anything, I don't know. Get some blood work done. I love it. I'll eat your pussy. I could spend hours down there, I love it. I'll go down to you for hours. I'm like, that's too long, you're doing it wrong. If you're down there that long, I don't need you down there. You're gonna eat it all. Like, leave some for the rest of us. That's too long. You're, by the time you come up, you're gonna look like my fingertips after a bath. It's, I don't wanna Benjamin button you down there. I get not wanting to eat pussy, can I say that? Like, I actually empathize with men who are like, mm, it's not for me. I like, I get it. Because like, there are times where I think I could date women and the one thing that holds me back is like, I just don't wanna eat pussy. Like, I just, that's the one thing. Sometimes that's the only thing. I remember telling my friend, Sabrina Jolie, she's a lesbian and she's a hilarious comic, but I was telling her that and she goes, so you think the only reason you can't be a lesbian is because you don't wanna eat pussy. And she goes, and you haven't eaten pussy. I'm like, no, but like, I just feel like I would like crave it if I was like a true lesbian. Like, it's like the base of the lesbian food pyramid. Like it's a staple of their diet. Like if I, if I'm like this about it, I'm probably not a lesbian. And she goes, okay, well, um, did you uh, crave sucking dick before you did it? Were you just like, I can't wait. And that blew my mind. Cause I was like, oh fuck. I'm, I'm gay. Like that's, I'm a hot, I'm fucking. 
Of course I didn't crave sucking dick. You don't crave it until you do it. There's so many things in life like eating pussy that you don't get into until you do it a lot and you learn a reason to love it. On paper, you're just like, nah, no. Nah. Like coffee, think about coffee. Remember the first time you tried coffee, you were a child and you were just like, what do adults like it so much? It's so gross. But you tried it once because you thought it was like a, a warm soda or something that your parent left behind and you like snuck it, but it's coffee and whiskey, but also mostly coffee and you're like, what the fuck? And you think, I can't believe, I will never drink this stuff. And then cut to today, you're an adult and you're addicted, like you can't live without it, you know? And it's the first thing I think about in the morning. So I don't know. I just hope someday, like years from now, you run into me and you just see me and I'm, I'm wearing like a funky sweatshirt that says like, don't talk to me till I've had my pussy. And I'm like, hey, and you're like, you did it. I'm like, I did, I did. And you know what? I bring my own creamer. <laughs> you're like, okay, didn't need that one. Let's go, kids. She used to be a famous comedian. But if I live long enough, I'm gonna eat pussy. It's like on my bucket list of sexual acts to do, for sure. I wanna do it, I'm scared to do it, but like, I wanna do it. Um, I just hope I scratch it off my bucket list before I'm like 90 in hospice care and like my grandkids are like, Grandma, you know, it's getting towards the end. Is there anything else that you wanna do? I'm just like, did you see my list? And they're like, unfortunately we did. Um, we were thinking maybe instead of that, we could, um, Taylor Swift is down to meet you, is that cool? I'm like, can she squat over my bed? Can we make... I'm like, Grandma, no! <laughs> Someday. I don't know. I've talked a lot about my vagina so far. Uh, I hit the quota. I talk about my vagina so fucking much. I have a lot of, like, guilt about it. I talk about it so much that I don't call it my privates. I call it my public. Um, I... <laughs> gotta stop talking about my public so much. I just... I read like what these philosophers write about on Reddit about how like female comics talk about their vaginas and that's like all they do and it's so easy for them. Being dirty, it does feel bad sometimes. I'm 37, all I do is talk about my vagina on stage. It's like enough, I just, I don't know. I'm just at this point in my career where I'm ready to like close that chapter and like pivot like to my asshole. Like you guys, I have not even begun. It, talk about clean material, my, my asshole is pretty clean, actually. Um, I'm prepared for later tonight, so it's uh, squeaky. Um, it's probably a better bet than my vagina right now, to be honest with you, because uh, I prepare, yeah. I used to just wing it. Don't do that, don't, don't just like feel your body and go, mm, I got it, you don't, you don't got it, and you'll pay the price, but and now I got a whole, I got a whole system. I'll tell you about it too. Cause I want you to have anal sex. I want all of you to. Let me, let me try to get you into it. Let me just try to persuade you. You don't have to, but I just know a lot of women who are so adventurous in bed. And when it comes to anal, they just go, no, no, mm -mm -mm, no, uh, I've tried it. And no, mm. and I hear you, I'm sure you did try it. But I'm just saying, I do think that maybe you can't say you've tried it. Really say you've tried it until you can answer yes to the following questions, okay? Number one. Did you use all the lube in the land? Did you <laughs> lube? I'm talking about lubricant you buy, not a couple loogies from the dry drunk mouth of the guy who convinced you it'd be a good time to try it when you're not actually ready. That's not lube.
lot of lube. I, I mean like a half a bottle. Enough that the TSA would be like, you can't go through with that. Like you gotta finish it. A lot. I'm not joking. Are you with someone that if you had an accident, you wouldn't have to kill yourself afterwards. Like they're not gonna tell their dodgeball league and it's gonna follow you around town. Are you doing it with someone that can keep a secret? A little brown secret? Cause if not, you haven't tried it. <sighs> Number two, are you relaxed? This is something that a lot of people have anxiety about. You gotta be relaxed. Did you come once already vaginally, clitorally, fakely, however you are used to it with your partner? Number two, did you prepare? Did you prepare? I used to not prepare because I thought that, oh, if I prepare, if I get like a kit, that's gonna mean something about me. Like I'm like, that's all I do. And it kind of is, but that's not, you don't, it's not a lot. I used to think it was gonna be a whole smorgasbord of things I'd have to do. All you have to do to prepare is watch a YouTube video of a gay guy in his bathroom being like, here's how you do it, bitch. And then you follow the link to buy the little fucking turkey baster that you keep underneath your sink. No one will know what it is. It just seems like the thing you like suck snot out of a baby's nose with. Like that's what it looks like. You squirt water up your butt 10 times till the water runs clean. Till it runs clean. Not like Flint, Michigan will clean, but like it's, <laughs> might be more than 10 times. And even after it runs clean, just do it like kind of do this a little, like just give it a couple like catch up thumps. Like you're trying to knock out the, just gonna make sure, you know, and um, find your Heinz 57, you know, the mark where you hit it and it like dislodges it. Mine's my solar plexus, might be a different spot for you. Explore yourself. Number two, did you lay down a brown towel? How now brown towel? Just in case for peace of mind. And finally, number two, start small. Don't start huge right away. Don't go right to the big leagues. Start with um, a finger, a tiny butt plug. Uh, maybe your boyfriend's tiny little penis. Start with something that's not intimidating. Start there. And then work your way up. And I know you're like, well, my boyfriend doesn't have a little tiny penis. He has a very big penis and that is crazy big and it's so big it's gonna like hurt. Just for a second, think about for me, um, the biggest shit you took, I don't know, in the past week. You know the one, you know? The one that you're like, this could make it in Guinness Book of World Records. Like I, if I did, enter it. You know the one. The one that you're like, I could give birth out of my ass. Like that just confirmed, like, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't, but I think you do. You know this. Am I the only one, the one that you'd want to take a picture of to send to your friend Anya, but you're like too scared you're gonna get hacked and that's what TMZ will run with? And they'll just blow past the folder you've clearly marked for them that says full face nudes. I mean, in conclusion, like, girls, you're shitting massive dicks like weekly, so just, you can do it. Aren't you glad I'm not talking about my vagina anymore? Isn't that such a, thank God. This is who I am, I have to say. This is genuinely the way I am off stage too. Um, and it is ironic because I am kind of prudish and I started out that way. I know that seems crazy in a relationship, I'm a filthy slut, but I, I'm kind of scared of guys, I always have been. I didn't kiss a boy until I was 17. I didn't have sex until I was 21. I didn't have consensual sex until I was like 25. I didn't enjoy sex ever. And no, it's true though. Because I was scared of sex. I was scared of what I didn't know because no one talked about it honestly, you know? I feel like sometimes female comics talking honestly about sex, we have to do it because sex education is garbage, you know? You either learn by watching porn or you learn at school where they either give you too much science-y words and then like horrifying STDs. So it's just like the vast deference is the janitor of the male reproductive system. And you're like, I don't know what to do with that. Is that sex? And they're like, well, if you have sex, your vagina might look like an exploded lasagna. So watch, it's just like, here's a picture. And you're like, Jesus Christ, it's nothing real. I, th I just think it's important to talk about this stuff openly and as much as I shouldn't be a 37 year old woman on stage talking explicitly about her sex life, I think there's something to be had from it. I remember my housekeeper being like, my 11 year old daughter Googled you. Oh, that was close. And I'm like, I hope she watches everything. I hope she watches everything. Cause I think kids are smart enough to go like, that's not for me yet. But when I get there, at least I'll know that a guy might come on my face and here's what I might be able to do with it. Be funny with it is the answer there. Be funny with cum 
You, you will have to encounter it. It's gross. You avoid it. First time I gave a hand job, I was so scared of cum, I did it over the toilet. So that it would just be direct deposit, because I was like, I'm going to be bad at handling cum. I was nervous about that. Insane. But I was. I was like, I'm going to be bad at it. Now I make all of my jokes during sex about cum, because I've learned the hard way that you, if you make jokes before they come, guys don't have like... All of their thought blood is in their dick, so they can't understand sarcasm or irony, so they're just like, what do you say? And so, focus all of your sex-based humor around cum, because after they come, they're just like, what? Okay. Like, they're back to normal, and you're like, you're like, oh, you're back. I missed you. That's when you can make them laugh. I do it all the time. Cum-based humor is my favorite. I don't know, cum in your hand is hilarious. You can act like you're Spider-Man, but you're like valves are clogged. You're like, it doesn't work. I told them. <clears throat> Rub it together, be like, Jacob's ladder. Like, do you see? Do you see it? Cat's cradle. I, I could go on for another two hours of cum bits. I have so many. <laughs> My favorite is after they come and they're just like, and they're just kind of laying there like, <laughs> and their little penis is like, like slowly <laughs> like shrinking up and kind of sticking to their thigh. And I'm just like walking around still like very like, just like full of energy. I'll be like, oh my God, I forgot my lip gloss. And I'll just grab it and go, mm, and then bye. And then I'll leave forever. No, I don't. I always come back. <laughs> Girls go into sexual encounters knowing really nothing because no one's telling them what honestly happens. And then you're scared of, of doing it wrong. Then something happens and you go, I guess that's the way it is, but it's not. I feel like it's most girls fear. Like we just are so scared of doing things wrong. That's why I never gave handjobs. I, I think I used to let guys fuck me before I even wanted them to because I just, it, it's easy to be good at sex. You're just like, I'm ho a hole, you know? But like when you're giving a hand job, it's like it takes rhythm and finesse. And I just was so anxious about being bad at it. Girls don't do so many things because we think we'll be bad at it and that you'll make fun of us or judge us for it or we'll disappoint you. And, and hand jobs, I avoided them. I literally ate ass before I gave a hand job. Like, I was just like, I, at least that's something he can't do himself, you know? Unless he's very flexible. But I was terrified of hand jobs. And that should be the first thing you do. I just feel like if, if I ever have a daughter, I'll drown her and wait for a son. But if I'm ever forced to have a daughter, because there's no water left to drown her in, I will... I will tell my daughter, like, hey, first of all, any worry you have about guys judging you or you being bad at it, if they have a boner, they're not really thinking. They're not judging you. They're not storing away information to use against you. They're really dumb when they're horny. Like, very, very dumb. Sometimes I hook up with guys and they're so horny and like, kind of like, Ugh. I'm like, is this like a situation where he's like special needs and I shouldn't do this? Like, am I gonna go to jail because I took advantage of a mentally challenged man? I swear to God, he was talking about Bitcoin 20 minutes ago, but now he can't form sentences and he's grunting and making weird noises. It's just like, what happened? I remember when I gave a hand job the first time, which was my biggest fear because they do it better themselves. This is something I know I'm gonna be bad at, no matter what. They're better at it than me. They've been doing it all along. And it's true, you'll never be as good at giving a hand job as a guy is to himself. That is true. They have clocked their 10,000 hours by the time they're in seventh grade. There's no chance you'll ever be as good at them. You're never gonna clock as many hand jobs as them. So the first hand job I ever gave, I was so paranoid about doing it worse than he does it that I was like, I'll do it from behind. It was like an improv game. Like I was like, I'm your arms, you know? I was like, it was like I was Wayne Brady on Who's Line. I was like, this'll do it. The worst part, I was already feeling terrible. Then the worst part was when I caught my own reflection in the bathroom mirror. And it was just such a sad sight. It was during the day. I'd just gotten uh, done with work. I was working at a Korean prep school, so my lanyard was just like hanging between us. And I was just like wearing this Target blazer and the lighting was terrible in the mirror. Oh my God. So it was a mirror here and then a mirror on this side. So it was infinity of me just like giving this sad hand job. Just like. It was the saddest Rockettes you've ever seen. It was like Christmas splooge tacular like I was just like oh god and that's when I started to shame spiral of like you're such a dumb slut like you're just giving this guy pleasure he doesn't like you. he's probably never gonna talk to you again he got nothing out of this and I just started going to this place and then I was like wait like <laughs> I'm not getting nothing out of this like this is kind of hilarious and maybe at the time I wasn't thinking I'm gonna tell thousands of people in Denver someday <laughs> but I thought I might tell my friends and that was 
is enough for me of just being like, this is funny because sex is hilarious. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're like, I'm being used and this, I'm just like, I'm getting nothing out of this. Just make it funny for yourself and like make it for you. Cause I swear to God, I remember I just had that thought and then I like straightened up my posture. I'm kind of getting like a swagger with it. And I looked back at myself and I winked. I was like, we got this girls. Like we were the Spice Girls before a final reunion performance. I just, I felt charged up from it. I was like, this is wild. I've never done anything like this in my life. I, I, I didn't kiss a boy until I was 17. I was scared of men and now I'm jerking this guy off over a toilet. Like, I, I'm cool. I remember skipping out of his house. I remember skipping to my fucking car that had been towed while I was doing it. So it was a low point in my life, but it was a high point because I was like, I'm a weird cool whore. And like, I don't know. I just can't wait to tell someone about it. Some of the most empowering days of my life have been from me doing just kind of slutty, degrading things that on paper could be, you know, oh, that's so sad. But I'm like, I never thought I could do this and I'm doing it. Like, if you would have asked me four years ago, Nikki, will you ever eat ass? I would have been like, yeah, I did two years ago. But if you would have asked me six years ago, will I ever eat ass? I'd have been like, this is a weird census. Get off my porch. But I would have said, is this really what they're asking now? Okay. Um, no, I would have said, hell no. I would, have gone, I would have signed off to go to my grave without eating ass. Who needs to do that? And ironically enough, since I've done it, I actually, I, it, I call eating ass going to the grave. But um, just based on the taste alone. But I have done it. I don't know how I did it. I only know that I got horny enough that it seemed like a good idea. I got as stupid as I've seen men get when they get horny, and I got there. I was able to do something I never would have thought. If you would have asked me 10 seconds before I did it, if I would ever do it, I would have been like, oh, no, there were balls in my mouth, but oh, no, oh, no. Like, I would have said no, because I had no idea. But I got horny enough that it seemed like a good idea. Guys, if you get us horny enough, we will do crazy, crazy things that we swear we'd never do. Keep that in mind, seriously. You just never get us horny enough. And by the way, when I say eating ass, I didn't like, I wasn't like, mmm, yo play, fruit on the bottom. Like, it's not eating, I hate eating. It sounds like I'm chewing it or something. No, he didn't have a hemorrhoid. I just like, <laughs> I feel like it'd be chewy. I don't know. Just like admitting that I ate ass, it's not, I'm not trying to be gross, I'm really not. I'm just, I swear to God, after I ate ass, I was like, I could do anything. Like I've licked a man's asshole. I could, I could be president. Like that's, you know? And then I remembered I'm a woman and I was like, okay, scratch that. Like, but maybe I could eat a president's ass. A girl can dream. I, uh, I lived with my parents during COVID for about 10 months. So now I'm looking for a husband um, because I don't want to do that again <laughs> when it comes back. Um, yeah, I got to get a husband. It's time. And it's really more about like just wanting to be with someone when the inevitable apocalypse befalls us. I just want one guy to fucking care about me. I want to be number one on a guy's list for him to be like, I got to get to Nikki. You know, like I want that. And sure, like my dad cares about me and I'm still like... I'm on his list, but I'm lower. There's nieces and nephews, and I'm still above my mom because I kissed him on the lips when I was 26, but um, <laughs> I earned that spot. But like, he's getting older, and I just want someone to like care when shit goes down. And it got into my head watching the movie San Andreas. Did you guys see that? Where like, there's this huge earthquake, and the, pretty much the only people that survive on the whole West Coast are the Rocks family that he's trying to get to the whole movie. The whole movie is him just trying to get to them in any way. And you don't stand a chance to survive unless you have the Rock looking for you. And I'm like, I gotta find my Rock. And the truth of the matter is, in a natural disaster, it's kind of everyone for themselves, you know? Like, I feel like even The Rock would just like sprint out of his mansion and leave his wife and kids behind. They're like, where are you going? And he's like, just like has his protein powders and his MTV Popcorn Awards and Kevin Hart in this arm. And it's just like, I'm just, I gotta get to Elon's. Just everything that'll keep him relevant into the future. I gotta find a guy to care. And by the way, I just want him to scream my fucking name. That's all I want. I just want the energy out in the world of like, Nikki! No, you're gonna, you're gonna try to find your mom. I just don't even pretend like you won't. Every man is gonna look for his mom, even if she's already dead. <sighs> that moment when we get the alert on our phone, that's when I want him to go into action. You know the alert that's gonna happen, that's gonna be like, it's ending, guys. Uh, sorry, five minutes to say goodbye. 
it's gonna sound like an Amber Alert at first. You're gonna go, should we even get it? It just sounds like, it's probably an Amber Alert. But someone's gonna go, it sounds different. Like it's like piercing, it's more urgent. It's like, maybe like a white child's missing. Like we should just check, like it could be a, a delicate baby white girl. I just wanna check. And I want my husband to look and it's like, you know, a tsunami is coming. I just want him to be like, Nikki! And then he doesn't get to me, he just gets like hit by a filing cabinet in a wave. But still, like, just the energies in the world. That is true though. It's like, you don't drown in a tsunami, you just die from the garbage in it. So that's, I just want you guys to rest assured, don't worry, you're not gonna drown. You're just gonna get impaled by a stop sign or like a fucking Peloton bike. It's gonna just slice off your head. But that's, just, you won't drown. <laughs> I started reading books though about how to trick a man into loving you because I was just like, this being yourself shit ain't working for old glazed dog. Uh, I'm gonna pick up one of these books. <laughs> these books that are like, do anything but be yourself. Please God, change your ways, here are the tricks. The one I tell every girl to read because I've seen my friends use it and it works is called Getting To I Do. Uh, it lays out a plan for how to get a guy and trick him into committing to you because he will have to deceive him. And, um, <laughs> It's just the way it works. And let me just say though, that the book Getting To I Do, um, if the guy you're trying to seduce into a relationship sees the cover of the book, you lost, okay? <laughs> Don't let him see the cover. Getting To I Do, it's terrible. Cover it up with another book cover. Fucking Mein Kampf is better than Getting To I Do. Anything. But it will get you there. I'm serious. Okay, so rule number one, and by the way, this is all based upon the fact that we are still animals. You know, our brains have not adapted to modern culture. We're still operating based on instincts that are gonna help our, our species survive and make more babies. So that's all we do, that's why we're attracted to anything is because somewhere back here, our mammal brain is like, this will help you survive or this will make more of you. So starting from that perspective, because we all used to live in tribes, by the way. There was no like marriage or like monogamy. We just all fucked each other. And we all needed to make as many babies as possible because the harsh winter was coming and babies don't survive. So it wasn't like it is now, but we're still operating on those instincts. Our, our brain has been hitting Remind Me Tomorrow on the system update for thousands of years. Like it's not gonna get to it. And so you have to honor that even though it sucks. Because the first rule, <sighs> Look fuckable, just look fuckable. Appeal to men wanting to put their penises in you and make more of them and be fuckable. Get his attention, make his monkey brain be like, I can get that pregnant. She looks like she's ovulating. She's a good host for my sperm. That's, every makeup trend is taking advantage of that biological wiring of like, she's ovulating. That's why, you know, we all want like big, shiny, like like glossy lips, like that's the look, because it looks like a vagina, which you probably know, right? Like literally the best looking lips right now are just the same ones you see on the baboon at the zoo exhibit that you have to like keep the kids away from it because she's just like wiping her wet vulva on like a branch and you're like, let's maybe go to see the dolphins. <laughs>
Sometimes we put on like this dewy finishing spray or like a highlighter, you know, but you spray this like glycerin spray at the end of your makeup and people honestly go like, Nikki, what's going on in your life? You're like glowing. What's happening? I'm like, this isn't some inner radiance. I've sprayed something on my face that's usually used to seal decks for the winter. So I'm actively absorbing cancer right now. Will you marry me? Um, <laughs> I don't like it and it sucks because you're like I want to wear pants they're comfortable and it's like okay well do you want a husband or do you want to pass legislation <laughs> like <laughs> it's unfortunate it sucks being fuckable is hard it's uncomfortable I wear heels that make my legs look great but my feet look like they've been through the Ming dynasty they're crumpled and bunioned just look fuckable girls it sucks I know it sucks you go and scan bring a sundress like show some skin a lot of single men on that mountain I was worried recently because I did an interview and, uh, and, and the headline of the article came out and it said, Nikki Glazer values being fuckable more than being funny. And I thought, oh my God, people are gonna come after me for this. I'm, I'm a bad feminist. Luckily no one saw it because like a celebrity died that day. So it was like, yes, thank God for the opioid crisis. Like really came in clutch for me that day. But um, it's just even what I said. Honestly, I was misquoted. I remember talking to the journalist and what I did say was I value being fuckable more than being funny, but like, Please don't print that. Like, I'm serious. Like, people are gonna be pissed, but like, between you and me, like, I do. That's why I'm trying to stay young. I'm aging though. I'm aging gracefully, but it's like, whatever uh, that means. And I just wanna let you girls in your 20s know, you're gonna age too. And I know there's a secret part of you that's like, I don't wanna, like, I just I don't feel like it. Cause I used to be in my 20s and like look at women with their skin slightly like succumbing to gravity, like their, their eyelids turning into like vaginal lips. Like I used to see that. I have it now when people put on my eye makeup, when I do it, I have to lift my eyelid like I'm looking for my clit and draw a line on. I used to be able to just boop. It's happening. It'll happen to you too. And I know that you're like, no, I'm gonna opt out. But like, I'm just not gonna age. I just like don't want to. And honestly, <laughs> I fucking hope you don't, because I want you to die young. I am tired of you <laughs> dating men my age who should be dating me, but they date you instead. It's okay. I'm not mad at you about it. I'm mad at those guys. And I'm not even mad. I get it. If I was an older guy that didn't want to settle down and was like turned down by hot young girls, I'd fucking date young girls too. But I wouldn't lie about it and be like, no, I know she's young, Nikki, but like, She's like really mature for her age. Like she's like, that's what I love about her most. She just so happens to be 22, but like, she's got like, she's got like the oldest soul. I don't know wh what's happening, but there's like an epidemic of 20 somethings with old souls happening right now, according to all my 40 year old friends. She's just got the oldest soul. Oh really? Of course you like the only thing old about a woman that you can't see. Oh, isn't that convenient? You never hear a guy going, she's 23. I know she's 23, Nikki, but seriously, she's got like the oldest pussy. And I just love it. It like looks like it's like been through some shit, you know? That's what makes her so great. It's like, shut up. You like her because she's hot and young. Stop lying. It's okay. You like her because she's young. She looks good. She has a tight skin, tight puss. She, you can lie to her and she doesn't like, she'll probably believe it more than an older woman would because we've been lied to more and we know your wily ways. She doesn't want to have kids yet. So you can like take your time. There's a million reasons to do it. It's not, it's okay. You don't have to lie and say they have old souls. They don't have old souls. A few of them do. I know a couple that actually do have old souls because something traumatic happened to them and they need to go heal from it. They don't need to be humped by you and your old body. They need to go talk to a woman in an office about why they're attracted to men that look like their uncle. That's what they need to do. Leave them alone. These 20 year olds should not have the despondent glare of a depression era dust bowl widow with seven mouths to feed. Leave her alone. Let her go heal. That's weird. So rule number one, look fuckable. Um, got that. Rule number two, all right? Now this throws you for a curve. Rule number one is look fuckable. Rule number two, don't fuck them. If you wanna get a guy, don't fuck them. That's really hard to do. Don't let them in your vagina. You can let them anywhere else. Well, the book actually says don't let them in your uh, mouth, your vagina or your ass, but like, a girl's gotta eat. So like, I just say don't let them in your vagina. That's my, that's my interpretation of the book. Cause it checks out, it's, it really does. It's, you've felt it before, it changes after sex. Even if you've waited like three dates to, to have sex with a guy cause you don't wanna seem easy or like however long it makes you feel like I'm not a slut and he'll respect me. Whatever rule you have in your head, 
and you actually feel like he likes you. And let's just say he does like you. Let's, for instance, say this is a guy who actually likes you. He's not lying. He's not an F boy. He's not lying to get something. He truly, he's like a Josh. He's not a Garrett. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. He's, he's actually invested. He wants a girlfriend. He hasn't said all these things yet because that's too soon to talk about it. But he's a nice guy. And he, and he showed such promise too. And you want to sleep with him because sex feels good and you're ready to do that. And you're like, this guy's my boyfriend. Let me just sleep with him, right? I'm tired of giving hand jobs. I don't have my Invisalign tonight. Let's just do this. And you go, he's going to be my boyfriend. This guy, I haven't seen a guy show this much promise in so long. You know, he, he knows my middle name. He, uh, he, he's, he listens to my dreams. Not like my aspirations, but like my dreams that like no one cares about. You know, where it's like my hands were hooves and I was in my childhood home, but it was like, he gives a shit about that. He's gonna come to my house next week and hang that mirror, that, that floor-length mirror I've just had tilted against the wall for four years, convincing myself that was the style, even though it's just because I don't have a man in my life with a tool belt. I'm just like, yeah, you just tilt it. He's gonna hang that mirror, this guy's gonna be my boyfriend. Let me sleep with him, and then you do, and you have sex and it's great. Whatever it is, it's good. He comes, and then afterwards, there's just this slight vibe that like, he like, hates you, like he, wants nothing to do with you anymore. You felt it, right? Every guy knows this feeling, and I'm not even mad at you about it. Every girl knows this feeling. The humidity in the room changes. He, something's different. You go, did I stumble into some bad lighting? You know, did we get lost in translation? Did I ask for too much? Maybe this thing was a masterpiece till you tore it all up, damn it! No, you question yourself. You go, what did I do? He didn't do anything. And guys, you're probably wondering the same thing of like, why do I not like her after this? What happened? It must be scary for you. I actually empathize. I used to get so mad at you and be like, he changed. Suddenly he's making up this whole thing about he has to go to a, a meeting tomorrow at 6 a.m. That whole thing of like, they go to their phone, they go, oh, fuck. And you go, what? And they're like, I just, I gotta go in the office tomorrow. It's fucking so. And you go, you didn't have a job 20 minutes ago. Like before we had sex. <laughs> You were unemployed. Uber doesn't have an office, okay? And you go, what did I do? And you didn't do anything. It's back to the caveman brain thing. We used to only have sex so we could procreate. So when a guy comes after even being in your vagina, if, even before, he pulls out, but if he's been in your vagina, his brain told him, you, got, you did everything you could to get this one pregnant, do not waste another load here. You can't get it pregnant twice, move on to the next TP and fuck her sister, cousin, or whoever. She's ovulating too, because this whole tribe ovulates at the same time. It's like a fucking Pilates class. Like, it's just... They're synced up. That's why you want to leave afterwards. That's why. And girls, I, I, I felt mad about this because I go, well, I want our tribe to have more babies too. Why do I get like fucking clingy after a guy comes? Why don't I want him to leave? And the thing is, women through evolution developed cuddling after sex as a way to get men to fucking leave. Because over time, we realized that's the quickest way for you to go fuck our cousin in the TP next door. So what you do, is you stop fucking them. You have to stop letting them in your vagina. And I know it sucks, but now you have anal to do. That'll be fun. Um, hand jobs, listen, you'll never be as good as they, they are, but here's what you do. Don't even try to be as good as them. Just try to be different. Guys just like different. Use lube. Guys don't use lube when they jerk off. Generally, they just grab like whatever lotion is nearby and it like stings their pee hole or they do it dry. And it's just not that good. So if you bring lube, and I'm even on, on a first fucking date, you know when you're sitting on the couch watching whatever he put on that you're pretending to like? So you're a cool girl, you're like, I love this reality show about Formula One driver, whatever the fuck it is. Like you're just like, I'm actually into it. And then he pulls out his dick because you start kissing for like two seconds and you're like, God, I don't want to blow him, it's too soon. I don't like, I don't want to have sex with him. Just go, um, I want to jerk you off, but I want to go get my lube. And I know that's like, I'm going to go get lube that's in my purse on a first date. Yes. Well, he's going to think that's so weird. If he has a boner, he's not thinking. He's not storing information about you or judging you. He'll just be like, okay. And you just go get your lube and you put it in your hand and he'll just kind of be like, what? And you don't even have to do a, a, a certain motion to make him happy. Just hold out your hand confidently and be like, just fuck my hand. You can giggle about it. Be like, some comedian told me to do this. Just fuck my hand, seriously. And do it, like, I like to do it like I stand like Beyonce at the end of like a really high note. <laughs> I just keep it still and let them fuck it. And you can, it's kind of fun because you get to change the tightness of your hand vagina. Because down there you are what you are, but here you can make it like 18 year old virgin or like octomom. Like you can do like, you can kind of. So, don't have sex with them in your vagina. 
And I know it's tough, but you can do it. And finally, so rule number one, let's review. Number one, look fuckable. Number two, don't fuck them. And number three, and this is where I had to drop out of the book, stop talking. Um, <laughs> just shut up. Uh, when you want to say something, don't say it, and men will like you more. And the thing is, oh no, I don't want to stop talking. I don't want to be like a fucking handmaid. Like, if there's something sad about that. Like, I'm going to just be quiet the rest of my life. No, no, no. You can go back to your normal self. You just have to wait until he dies. And then you can chat it up while playing canasta with your gals. No. You just got to, like, not talk as much. And that one was a harsh reality to face. But it checked out. When I read that, I was like, God, stop talking. That makes so much sense. I've always wondered why, as a female comic who's got a little bit of notoriety, why I don't have the same selection of suitors that male comics seem to get. You know, male comics are batting so fucking far out of their league. They, they, do, they do better than musicians, than actors. And I mean, there's evidence of this. I mean, look at Pete Davidson. Not closely, but like, if you... He's a, he's a good looking guy, no doubt about it. Would I? Of course. But is... Is he Kate Beckinsale, Kim Kardashian, Ariana Grande, Kaya Gerber, hot? He's he got it for women. No, he's, he shouldn't be fucking Kim Kardashian. Like with Pete Davidson's looks, he should be fucking me. Like I would be a good person. But that would never happen. Because male comics can get so far out of their league, it frustrates me. Men already get out of their league just by being whoever they are. Every single straight couple you know, the woman is definitely hotter than the man. It's just the way it is. Maybe you can think of one couple, or like a couple that you can think of, celebrity couples, where you go, he's actually far more handsome than she is. What do you say? You go, he's really, he's so good looking. And she's pretty cool with the fact that he's gay. Like, I love that she just lets him fuck guys and they pretend to be married. They, they're like, oh, it's like Timon and Pumbaa. Like, they think your husband's gay if you're less attractive. But male comics, man, they fucking kill it. And female comics just don't do as well. And I've always been like, wh where's the disconnect there? And it makes sense. It's because men don't really, they're not horny for women who talk a lot and who are loud. And it's based on the caveman thing again, I think. Because there's something about a guy on stage just like commanding a crowd. He has all your attention. He's controlling people's emotions by making them laugh. And you're just like, that's the tribe leader, and I shall have him. He will help my survival. He has all the sickest furs in that teepee of his. I'll be protected during wartime and famine. He will be mine. It's like hot to you, but it's not the same for female stand-ups. Men aren't like horny for women on stage being like, my pussy itches, so let me tell you about it, girls. Like, they, they're not like, yes. They're just like, ugh. It's fine that you're saying that, just like, can you just like quiet down a little bit? Your voice is really harsh and it like slices through the night air in a different way than ours. And there's a neighboring tribe just over the ridge that is ready to attack and they're gonna come murder us at dawn because you won't shut up about your pussy it itching. So can you please keep it to hush tones over the fire, please? We're gonna die because you have an opinion. And it's just, just true. And then there was a study that came out that confirmed all of this. There was a study that came out that my friend found it was, uh, I think it was in the Atlantic Ocean. It was an Us Weekly that she kind of pulled out of the surf, but she, f no, it was, it was like in a reputable or reputable, I don't know which word, because I don't read those journals, but like it was in one of the gooder journals. And um, what the study said was why men don't like funny women. And what they found was that men and women both say they look for the same thing in the opposite sex. First of all, looks. Second, sense of humor, which... That should be a good thing for female comics. Number two, sense of humor. But then they dug deeper and what they found was that women define sense of humor in a man as a man who makes them laugh. And men define sense of humor in a woman as a woman who laughs at their jokes. <laughs> yeah. That's not a funny woman. It's a smart woman. And that's why I'll be alone forever. That's it though. Look fuckable, don't fuck them. Talk less.